Okay, so before the video begins, I changed my name. I know I technically addressed it in the last video, but that video severely underperformed, which sucks because Ping Pong the Animation is one of my favorite anime of all time, so please go watch that video after this one. Either way, yes, your favorite anime YouTuber is now named Fault, and I hopefully plan on making more videos focused on manga, so please, please, please leave any and all manga suggestions or manga focused video topics for me to make videos on. I really do want to try for more viewer interaction because it makes my day like you wouldn't believe. So any positive comments or suggestions are greatly appreciated. Anyway, sorry for the boring pre-video notes, enjoy yet another Hoseki no Kuni video. Okay, hot take incoming. Dia, Daya, Diamond, whatever you want to call them, well, they're kind of a bitch. Now, I don't mean this in a, well, mean way, but really, taking a close look at Dia as a character, yeah, they're not exactly the nicest character out there. That being said, I don't know if I'd exactly call Foss themselves nice. So, Dia, they're the topic of yet another Hoski no Kuni video. What can I say, they tend to do pretty well. But honestly, Dia was a character that I really loved going into Hoseki no Kuni. I mean, come on, for a rock, they're pretty high, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, I'm sitting in my room alone on a Friday night. Anyway, Dia was always the sweet one to Foss. And when starting off the anime, everyone else were total, you know, I probably shouldn't curse as much, total not nice peoples to Foss. Foss in their earliest forms was so innocent and sweet, and while definitely a ditz who was useless in pretty much every way, they were still our main protagonist who we all fell in love with from episode 1. Seeing them constantly underappreciated at best, and at worst straight up harassed, well, it got to me. But we always had Dia to save the day. Dia in the anime was by no means perfect. I mean, they were clingy as hell and kind of desperate sounding, absolutely, but they were sweet and caring and that's what really mattered to my first time anime watcher self. At the end of the day, Dia was there when the other gems weren't. So what's my point here? Dia was nice to Foss. Duh, I mean, look at them together, it's adorable. Well, Dia's relationship with her little sibling Foss isn't the focus here. It's with the other uptight asshole gem, Bortz. Now, now I know I've already insulted 90% of the Hoseki no Kuni fanbase, but wait, wait, before you go, I have a point to this, so stay with me here. Bortz is important in this conversation because Bortz here is always kind of a terrible gem, in the beginning at least. Because some of the most underappreciated, overlooked character growth happens with Bortz. And on the flip side of that, some of the best character deterioration happens with the once lovely Dia. When you really take a deep dive into Dia's character, it's one that invokes great pity. It's so relatable that you can't help but feel bad, while at the same time wishing Dia would get her gem head cut off already. The relationship problems between Dia and Bortz aren't exactly hidden. Dia is envy. Like, that's not even me being dramatic, Dia is practically the embodiment of envy. Dia's actions, especially in her final breakdown, go far past jealousy, to the point where even Bortz feels nothing but pity. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's take a look at one of the first interactions between Dia and Bortz. Chapter 3, appropriately named Diamond. These chapters give a somewhat backhanded introduction to Dia. We follow Foss as she aimlessly wanders around the island, looking for anyone to help her with her all-important task of writing an encyclopedia, until she stumbles upon a brilliant shine in the distance, Diamond. Foss and Dia exchange pleasantries for a brief moment, but almost immediately, Dia's entire character revolves around Bortz. Like literally, this isn't even an exaggeration. Two panels into them meeting, Dia already brings up Bortz. And by bring up, I mean obsess over. Where's Bortz? I'll never be as good as Bortz. Dia's whole character after her talk with Foss is, Wow, Bortz is so cool, I wish I was her because I hate myself. Oh, I have an idea. How about I try a dangerous new attack against the Lunarians while one of the weakest gems is right next to me? Granted, Dia snaps out of it quick enough to save Foss, but we can clearly see Dia isn't in the best state of mind. Then enters Bortz. Even before Bortz's appearance on screen, or rather, on panel, they're mentioned by Dia in the highest of manners, but in a very obvious, jealous way. There isn't anything inherently wrong with saying, I just can't keep up with him. But this is clearly Dia saying I'll never be as good as Bortz and because of that I resent them. 
I know I said he in reference to Bortz, that's because the manga translation refers to them as he. Refer to the link in the description for more information on gender in Hosuki no Kuni cause it can kinda get confusing. Future video idea by the way. Anyway, bam, here comes big bad, oh no, they're hot, Bortz. Bort saves the day in the coolest of fashions, and what's the first thing we see after this? More Dia praise. Isn't it amazing? It's always like this. Just look at Dia's facial expression here. Is that really the face of a friend praising another? No, it's the face of a jealous and dependent gem. Believe me, I fully get where Dia is coming from. In fact, us as the audience are supposed to understand where Dia is coming from. This scene is here so we relate and feel pity for Dia. Lines such as, if only Bortz wasn't here, are meant to get us to feel a connection with Dia. We have all felt a similar sense of insecurity in ourselves that leads to a weak moment of jealousy. But when you uncover the not so covered secret, you can see the beginnings of a rather peculiar character arc. The rest of the chapter follows suit, with a somber telling of Dia's story being second best. But I think our time is best spent with a little time skip. Fast forward about the entire manga and we get to one of my all time favorite moments in Hosaki no Kuni. I'm going to bring back Bortz and all of your complacency will disappear. After Monster Lapis and the Moon Gems have spent hundreds of years here on the moon, calling them gems anymore is hardly accurate. They're practically Unarians, but not quite. Dia still carries her hatred and jealousy of Bortz. Even after all of these hundreds of years, even after having all of the moons stand and cheer for her, Bortz remains strong in Dia's head. And this leads to my all time favorite line. The line that has stuck with me all this time waiting for the Hades to come to a long due end. It's silly to be afraid of him forever, isn't it? I need to get myself together and end it already. Yeah, I'll go and turn that little nuisance into dust. Come on dude, that has got to be one of the most badass lines in Hoseki no Kuni. Dia is full on batshit crazy at this point and paired with lines from Foss like, we don't need to restore any gems from dust. At this point I'm covered in chills from head to toe because I know shit is about to go down. And go down it did. Finally, we come to the moment I'm sure most of you expected this conversation to go to. Dia versus Bortz. The faded conclusion between the 86 long chapter feud. There's someone I don't recognize. I wonder if he's a newborn. Is that not just Bortz? Bortz has come so far as a character we just have to talk about it. I mean yeah they aren't the greatest character in Hoseki but come on no one gives Bortz the credit they deserve. I'm not going to get too into it in this video but going from a battle hardened cold machine to an apathetic jellyfish razor is the perfect character arc for someone like Bortz. Either way here we have the perfect final battle. Dia who as mentioned is a nutcase and Bortz who has finally found peace. Dia who is always obsessed with besting Bortz and Bortz who's finally learned to give up all her hatred and rage. Dia who can't ever forgive Bortz for making her feel like a lesser diamond. Dia who has changed so much not a single gem recognizes her. You've changed brother. Brother. I know people get angry when you gender certain characters but this line is incredibly important. Throughout the entire manga the gems are referred to as he but we never once hear them call each other brothers. But here we have one of the most heart wrenching lines. You've changed brother. Said by Bortz right before the finishing blow. Bortz is shattered before getting to give Dia one final look. But Dia gets to see. Dia gets to see a shattered and broken Bortz. And what does she do? She fucking smiles. I mean that is how you write a messed up character. Alright well that's it for me ladies and gentlemen, I hope I did a good job making my case but to be fair it's hard to argue that Dia is a good person in the end. I think that's what makes Hosuki no Kuni so interesting. Every single character is just awful in the best ways. Either way I really hope you enjoyed the video and I thank you all for your patience with this one. I know it's been a while and this video took forever to make thanks to midterms coming up and work and everything in life being overwhelming which unfortunately makes videos a lot less frequent. But seriously thank you all for watching till the end, love you all and I'll see you all next time. Peace.